Tropical system passed by today, dumping quite a bit of rainfall. Steady rain for most of the day. It's out of here. Now we start tracking the potential of strong and severe storms for your Sunday. That's why it's a first alert severe weather day. I'll have the latest for you. When we show a force of togetherness, we show unity. No one can break that unity. Dozens of folks took to the streets tonight, part of a peace walk in memory of a man murdered here at Duncan Park. A shocking discovery on the side of a Kentucky road. Police say several people found a man's body. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Kristen Kennedy. What's left of subtropical cyclone Bill is moving out of the bluegrass tonight. We are tracking another round of strong to severe storms headed our way. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking the storms on the first alert defender. We actually have some out there tonight just up the road that might roll into parts of Kentucky during the overnight, but our better chances arrive during the afternoon and evening tomorrow, probably late evening, as a matter of fact, as they get fired up. You see Defender, Kentucky's most powerful live Doppler, is quiet all across the Commonwealth. We expand our view and we see two features out here. First, you see what's left over of Bill, which is very little. Now, it's causing some problems, but it's also losing a lot of moisture as it's making that uh, trek over the Appalachian Mountains to our northwest. That's where we're tracking showers and thunderstorms. And that's going to be kind of the open area that we're going to see more energy dive in from during the day tomorrow. That's where we're going to get our next shot. But notice what's happening with that particular area as it's starting to bow out. It's pushing more toward the south, deeper into Illinois. We could get in on the northern flank of that, but it'll be very weakened by the time it arrives late tonight, early tomorrow morning. So as we look ahead here, we're talking about strong and severe thunderstorms for you early on Sunday morning. Areas of patchy fog, stray shower chance, and as we advance through the day by tomorrow night, that's when our strong to severe thunderstorms could arrive. I will track that in here hour by hour coming up in just a few minutes. Leaders at the National Weather Service say a small tornado touched down near the Ohio River in Indiana yesterday. An EF0 tornado with winds of about 80 miles an hour left a trail of damage near the town of Troy. The damage was about a third of a mile long, 150 yards wide, and confined to a forested area near an industrial park. The tornado didn't hurt anyone. The heavy winds and rain today brought down trees and even some power lines in Lexington. This tree came crashing down on Faulkner Road near Russell Cave Road this morning, taking a power line with it. Kentucky Utilities crews reported several outages in Lexington today. With all the rain we're seeing, Lexington firefighters are reminding people not to drive through high water. April storms brought heavy rain to many parts of the state washing away some roads and firefighters say back then they had to make more than a dozen water rescues. Do us a favor and if you can stay out of the water, absolutely stay out of the water. Just be a good day to good day to order a pizza and, and get a movie and stay home. Some of the hardest hit areas in Lexington are Russell Cave Road, Bryan Station, Newtown Pike, Amborio Road. Remember, you can always track severe weather even when you're away from your TV. Be sure to download the WKYT First Alert Defender radar app for your iPad or smartphone. The app can connect you to weather tools, including live radar. You can also go to WKYT.com to look at the First Alert Defender and zoom into your neighborhood. Family tell us he was an innocent bystander caught in crossfire. The death of a Lexington man sparked a movement his mother continues today. Antonio Franklin Jr. died at Duncan Park in April last year. Dozens walked the streets this evening for peace in Franklin's name to make sure the devastation his family felt isn't felt by others. WKYT's Garrett Weimer walked with Franklin's mother, Anita. He has our top story at 11. Anita Franklin started this walk in memory of her son, but she says that's not who it's for. He's with God. It's about the children that are here on earth, and we need to work hard to make sure they understand we love them and support them. That's her mission. So for the second straight year, she and dozens of others took to the streets to take them back from violence. Just trying to teach the kids early, keep them as a community, keep them together, teach them to stay away from the violence. As a mother, why is that something that's so important to you? I have four boys, so for me, that's... Very important to keep them out, keep them off the streets, out of trouble, 
keep away from everything that's been going on, which is a hard task nowadays. Duncan Park brings back a lot of memories for Anita Franklin, none more so than the mural near the place where her son died. People may not know me today, but what matters is that I make a difference in the life of a child. That means something. There's always a reason, a purpose for everything that happens. So we'll get through it together. Me and my community, we'll get through it together. With all these feet and all these faces walking in unity, Franklin says it helps her heal, knowing they're that many steps closer to stopping the violence. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Organizers have also scheduled walks for July 11th and August 8th. Both of those will also start at 6 o'clock at Duncan Park. Investigators in Bullitt County tell us several drivers spotted a badly injured man on the side of Interstate 65. Around 3 o'clock today, several people reported seeing a man suffering from multiple injuries near the exit ramp going into a rest area near mile marker 112. By the time officers arrived, the man was dead. The calls initially came in as a fight, an auto accident, a stabbing, an injured person. Police are trying to figure out if a Ford F-150 found near the scene at the end of the ramp is connected to the victim. They are questioning a person of interest. Right now, they are not releasing the victim's name. Police in Floyd County say a man died late Thursday night when a car hit him while walking on Highway 80. Police say the person who hit Jeffrey Turner drove away, and now investigators need help finding that person. Friends and family want the person responsible to come forward. They should get life in prison to run off the, the boy. The boy do anything in the world for you, Jeff would. Funeral arrangements for Turner have not yet been set. This coming week, a central Kentucky community will lay to rest an officer who lost his battle with cancer. Officer Kenny Goodlett died Friday morning. More than 60 police, fire, and EMS crews escorted his body from hospice in Lexington back to Lawrenceburg. Visitation for Goodlett will be Monday from 3 to 8, then again on Tuesday from 1 to 8, and Wednesday from 11 to 1. His funeral service will be immediately after the final visitation. A man Lexington investigators say may be connected to multiple robberies is now in jail. Police arrested and charged Kenneth Andrews for four robberies in Lexington. They believe Andrews robbed a GameStop on New Circle Road in March and that he may also be connected to robberies at a Marathon, a Circle K, and a Shell Station. We have a traffic alert for drivers on Versailles Road. Crews are rescheduling a traffic switch due to the weather. The left lanes of east and westbound Versailles Road west of New Circle will close at 7 Monday. The closure will allow crews to finish median construction and work in the eastbound left lane. He may be small, but his heart is huge. A city honored a six-year-old Louisville boy this week for saving his dad's life. All eyes were on six-year-old Xander McFeeders as he accepted the Hobie's Heroes Award. His dad was on a tractor when a tree limb knocked him out in October. The little boy turned the tractor off and ran to get his father help. I saw a tree hit him, and I run out there. And I helped him get the tractor off, and, and everything for him to help him. His dad suffered from a concussion and other serious injuries. He has recovered. A piglet who survived a semi crash near Dayton last week has now found a forever home. Police say a semi trailer carrying 2,200 piglets overturned on an Ohio highway last week. Some were rounded up, many escaped. But the little pig was trapped in the wreckage after the crash and got loose when someone towed the truck away. Friday, he went to the Sunrise Sanctuary in Marysville. Where he will live out the rest of his days. The lucky little pig's new name is Nathan.